Good morning, church. Yeah. Good morning, Pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I um I want us to do a call and response real quick. I'm gonna say he is risen, and you are gonna say he is risen indeed. All right, here we go. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us on this Easter Sunday. Uh, just a couple of quick uh, programming notes uh, before we begin. I want to encourage you uh, that uh, as we uh, continue in our worship today, uh, that we are also live on Facebook. And we are also attempting to, to, to go live on YouTube, and apparently it must be because of all of the internet traffic. Praise God, there's a lot of people trying to watch Easter services. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so definitely uh, just uh, know that we are still trying to do that as well. And, and, and as we start the service, I want to encourage you, if you would, uh, to mute yourselves for those of you that are on Zoom. Uh, and of course, right, uh, uh, the, the reason why we ask you to do that is so that it just doesn't uh, distract uh, from the service itself. And this is the wonderful thing about being able to worship together in our own homes, if you will. Uh, you know, while we're worshiping, you can get up and go to the kitchen and, you know, warm up some food, but we don't need to hear all that. <laughs> so I think I remember hearing a funny story of a woman who was in a Zoom meeting and she didn't realize that everybody was watching her and she uh was going to the bathroom so so uh so definitely please mute yourselves if you're in zoom and you can still chat with each other this is the beautiful thing about zoom too is you can chat with each other so chat with us uh chat pr uh, praises and thanks chat prayer requests uh you can chat with one another even uh and also too right with the facebook uh people there can also comment and uh we have Claire. Let's give Claire a big hand. Woo! Yes, thank you, Claire. Awesome, awesome. We need to, we need to give her hazard pay for coming in <laughs> all these Sundays. Uh, but, uh, she, you know, she'll, she'll, um, she'll be commenting uh, with you guys as well. And then, uh, of course, uh, for those of you that are watching, God bless you. Thank you for joining us uh, this Easter Sunday. And so as we begin, I'd like to invite now... Uh, Craig Day, one of our elders, uh, to give uh, his call to worship and opening prayer. So take it away, Craig. Uh, good morning, church. The call to worship this morning is John 16, 19 through 28. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this. So he said to them, are you asking one another what I meant when I said, in a little while you will see me no more? And then after a while, you will see me. I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman gives birth to a child in pain because her time has come. But when her, child, her baby is born, she forgets the anguish of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day you will ask me in my name. I'm not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me, and I believe that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Let us pray. Lord, this Easter season, let us truly embrace who you are. In this time of turmoil, Lord, you sit on the throne of creation and you rule over life and death and all diseases and all things that happen in this world. 
There is nothing that happens that you do not know, nothing that passes by you unnoticed. Lord, you are the truth, the eternal truth. And Lord, let us find comfort in that and let us embrace that. Let your Holy Spirit fill our hearts and, and keep us seeking you. For you are what we need and you are who we need. And you are the success in our lives and our life everlasting. And we ask this in your Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In Matthew 28, it says, Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know who you seek is Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. As he said, come see the place where he lay. And, they, and then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee, and there you will see him. So I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Amen. Amen. The person you're looking for is not here. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's sing before the Lord this morning uh, this song that he lives. A bit of a new song, but let's, uh, let's sing it together. See the tomb where he lay, see the stone roll away, he is risen, he is risen, he's alive. See his hands, see his feet, touch his scars and believe, he is risen, he is risen, he's alive. He's alive, he lives, all honor and power are his, all glory forever, amen, Jesus lives. Hear the shackles breaking free, hear the song of the redeemed. He is moving, he is moving, he's alive. Take this freedom, take this love, can you feel it rising up? He is here, he is here, he's alive. He lives, all power and glory are His, all glory forever, amen. Jesus, He lives, all honor and power are His. All glory forever, amen. Jesus lives. Yes, you live, Lord. You took all our shame, left it in the grave, we're forgiven. 
we're forgiven the work forever done only by the blood it is finished it is finished and you took all our shame left it in the grave we're forgiven we're forgiven the work forever done only by the blood it is finished it is finished he lives all honor and glory are his all glory forever He lives, all honor and power are His, all glory forever, amen. Jesus lives, Jesus lives. Jesus lives. He is risen, he is risen, he's alive. He is risen, he is risen, he's alive. Oh, he is risen, he is risen, he's alive. He is risen, He is risen, He's alive. Praise you, Lord. The death could not hold you, Lord. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Amen, amen. As we continue in on our Worship to the Lord and music. We ask uh, Megan and Jason to, to lead Living Hope. Go for it.
Thank you so much, Jason and Megan. And uh, now we've got Paula and Jason that are going to uh, lead us in what a beautiful name. Oh 
Yes, Lord, we praise you because you have the name that's above every name. Praise you, Lord. Let's lift up our voices to the Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Your grace is beyond measure, Lord. Your mercy is unfailing, Lord. We praise you for who you are. Lord, we thank you that hell, death, and the grave could not hold you down. And Lord, now you have the keys of death and hell in your grave, in your hand, Lord. Never to affect us, never to affect us, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Wonderful name. Beautiful name, powerful name of Jesus. The only one by which men can be saved. Lord, we praise you, we praise you, we lift you up in this place. Lord, as we come together over the internet, Lord, we just thank you for how you keep us. Holy Spirit, come in power. Blow throughout all the houses, Lord, that are represented here. Fill us to overflowing, Lord. Let your peace, let your joy, let your love, Lord, reign in our hearts and in our minds. We praise you. We praise you. Oh, mighty Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jason and Megan and Paolo and Jaza. Um, how wonderful uh, to be able uh, to receive uh, for you guys to bless us uh, from your own homes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, as we continue in our worship, I just want to make a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, actually, I, I should have done this sooner. 
But uh, hold on just one second. Okay, so mask. And if you saw that awesome email from Claire earlier in the week talking about masks, not the ones that we put on, <laughs> uh, 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 but, uh, but these kind of masks. Uh, Kay, our very own Kay, uh, is offering to make masks uh, for those of you uh, that need them. Uh, so please uh, let her know. You can, you can either let her know directly or you can let the church know, let us know, and uh, Kay will put you on the list to make masks. I know she's already been doing that already, so thank you, Kay. God bless you. You're awesome. Uh, so, and isn't this beautiful? This is beautiful, let me tell you. Uh, so, uh, so, yes. So, again, if you need a mask, uh, please let Kay know, let us know, and uh, we'll, get, we'll get them to you as well. Also, too, wanted to let you know there was another email uh, that Claire sent out about ways that you can help and get involved, right? This, this is the moment where we as believers in Christ, as ambassadors of God's reconciling love, we can step up and help. And so if you didn't get that email, please, uh, again, uh, either chat us right now or, or text us or call us, email us, and we'll, we'll, we'll get that in, into your hands again. But there was a great list of stuff that you could be involved in. For example, Family Promise, a ministry that helps... Uh, families that are either homeless or near homeless, uh, the, uh, that we were looking actually to begin a relationship, a partnership with them, uh, they gave us uh, a way to be able to help in this time. And it, it's very easy stuff that, that could be done. Uh, Cranford Park uh, and Rehabilitation Center, right here in town, over by the old mill, we reached out to them and they let us know of things that we could do to help uh, as well. And then, and then of course, um, uh, I know that uh, Sherry, our children's director uh, has, has asked the children to get involved by doing this, writing notes and cards, encouraging notes and cards. And uh, we're going to get them out uh, to the nursing homes, to those that are on the front lines uh, as well, uh, and to, uh, to, to others that we know that could use that encouragement. We put out that blue uh, mailbox-looking thing that used to hang out in the church, you know, that was, used to be used for the old stamps. We put that out on the front door of the church office so that people can just drop those off uh, anytime. Uh, so there's that. And then, of course, uh, there's, there's this thing called FLAG. It's an acronym for Frontline uh, something, I forget. But, you know, Boxcar, the folks that we let use our parking lot, uh, they partnered with this organization, and it's a great idea, all right? And so what it does is it allows you to sign up and to buy a meal from a local restaurant. So, number one, we're helping a local restaurant, right, in this time. And then, and then secondly, what ends up happening is, is then that restaurant ends up making food for people that are on the front lines. And they've been going around blessing, you know, uh, police departments and hospitals and ur urgent care centers and EMT. I mean, it's, it's been amazing. So again, again uh, just another simple way to get involved and to help uh, in, in a meaningful way. And of course, I hope you're doing that already anyway, just with your own neighbors and friends and family and all that other good stuff. Another thing uh, I want to mention as well is that um, uh, I'm going to be uh, hosting an online alpha series. You'll hear more about that as well. But uh, some of you may remember before all of this happened, uh, I was trying to promote that, uh, that we're going to be offering an alpha uh, program. This is a, a program, video-based, where we introduce the truth claims of Christianity in a way that's non-threatening, non-judgmental, uh, and for anyone who has any background or no background at all uh, uh, about who Jesus is, what the church is all about. Uh, it's a great way uh, to, to introduce folks uh, to, uh, to, to Jesus. <laughs> and so, like I said, you're going to hear more information about that. I'm going to encourage us all to invite people that we know, sort of like uh, that we can watch together, and, and then we can interact with one another that way too. Even if you, you're someone who's like, you know what, I know, I know all about Jesus and the Bible and all that stuff. This would be good for you, too, as a refresher. So just want you to know, be, be on the lookout for that. Also, I've, I've, uh, I've been thinking about what are we going to do now um, after Easter? <laughs> and who knows how long we're going to be like this. Uh, but, you know, I was doing a sermon series in the parables. So I, I hope that that was meaningful for all of us 
during, the, during that time. But now the, uh, the next sermon series that's going to begin this coming Sunday is, uh, it's, you know what? It's going to be at the movies. So, you know what? What better time? We're all at home, uh, plenty of time to watch movies. And so I'm going to, again, let you know uh, a movie that I'll be focusing on so that way you can watch it maybe beforehand in the week and then uh, be able to interact as well and then you'll hear a message uh, on it. Uh, again, I believe that the gospel is preached in so many ways, in so many movies, it's not even funny. And so, so this will be a great way, again, to connect with one another and, again, with the truth that we know that's in God's Word. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, and then, of course, again, just want to thank you all for continuing uh, to give, to be faithful in your offering unto the Lord and your tithes as well. Uh, I, I, I want to uh, just especially thank Claire and, and Sherry right now because they willingly uh, took back hours. They willingly shaved off hours uh, because they knew that, that this, this would be tough. And I know that there are others out of you out there that are also struggling. With, maybe you lost your job. Maybe you've got reduced hours as well. And so please let us know that. Let me know that. Let any one of our leaders know that. If, you are, if you're in a tough spot, let us know. Uh, because this is, this is what's beautiful about a church community, when we can come together and help each other. So please uh, do that. Again, many ways that you can give. Some of you uh, like to drop off, uh, drop off your offering or mail it in. Thank you. Praise God for you. You can also give securely online at our website, cranfordalliance.org, or through our mobile app. If you don't have our mobile app, you can download it, Cranford Alliance Church, and all that other information there, the YouTube clips, the... Uh, podcasts, all, uh, all that stuff is there too as well. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, that was a lot of information to get to you, but I hope that uh, it, some of it has been meaningful for you. Now, we're going to unmute ourselves. We're going to greet each other, and I especially want to welcome the children to come on in and, and say hi to each other and greet each other as well. They have their own service at noon, and so if you're watching and you have children and you didn't get that invite, chat us, text us, email us. We'll get that Zoom invite out to you for their, their own uh, worship, Easter Sunday worship service that Sherry's going to lead them in. So, all right, guys, go for it. Greet one another. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. 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 Hello. Hi. Happy Hello. Happy Easter. Easter. Hi, Jim and Janet. Thank you. Good memories again. Hi, Grace. Hello. Who's hiding in the hood over there? That's <laughs> <laughs> Good. 
Yes. Hey, Lori. Can you see her? Thanks for your message. <laughs> yeah, like if they see where it's fish. Hanging out outside. All right, all right. All right, all you friendly people. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, just just want to let you know that uh, because it's Easter Sunday, uh, once the service concludes at the end, we will quit the Facebook live feed, but we will keep the Zoom space open for those of you that want to have sort of a virtual coffee hour uh, and, and, and chat with one another. We can certainly leave that space open as well. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, um, uh, I'd like to, um, uh, con as we continue on our worship now, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Jason Cruz. He's going to share uh, a few words with us. For those of you that may not know uh, Jason, not only is he is he our resident uh, rock star, uh, but uh, uh, he's he's also out there on the front lines. And so, uh, just w uh, by way of reminder, continue to pray for him as well. And I know we know other people too that are out there that are on the front lines. People like Rainy, people like Nancy, uh, as well. Uh, and um, but uh, I asked Jason to share uh, because I think I really do believe he has a unique perspective for us to hear. Uh, in this time. So Jason, God bless you, brother. Thank you for being willing to do this, and it, it's all yours. Go for it. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. As most of you know, I work uh, full-time at two separate uh, EMS agencies as an emergency medical technician. Um, I'll be the first to admit uh, that I did not expect COVID-19 to be much more than a different flavor of a flu based off the information that I was initially provided. Lord, forgive me, I was sorely wrong. This pandemic is unprecedented and has claimed over 10, 100,000 souls in less than six months. Uh, nearly every call I've been dispatched to, we've been getting um, suspected or uh, confirmed COVID patients. Some of these patients are very sick and require um, extremely rapid intervention. The emergency rooms are overflowed with coronavirus patients, most of, the, most of which are on uh, mechanical, mechanical ventilators and don't have a great chance of recovering. Each shift, I pray that myself, that myself and my colleagues don't contract the virus and bring it home to our families. Unfortunately, several EMTs at a nearby agency uh, lost their lives to the virus. Uh, one of them was 24. Um, I don't know about everybody else, um, but myself, I've, I've asked God why. Why must you allow this to happen? Why must so many people die? Why must healthcare providers that are only trying to help people lose their lives as well? I believe the answer to uh, my questions came with my own father uh, contracting the virus. He was symptomatic for a week uh, before he developed difficulty breathing and uh, dangerously low oxygen levels requiring him to be placed on an oxygen mask around the clock and was admitted to step down ICU for five days. Uh, thankfully, he is now healed and recovering at home. Um, I believe God answered me in this fashion because he was telling me that I need him, that I must trust him, and my father's fate was solely uh, in his hands. God has historically allowed infections of all kinds to disrupt mankind. As horrific and seemingly dispassionate this may be, I believe God's message through all of this was to lean on him. We as Christians were never promised that this life would be free of sorrow. In fact, sometimes it's quite the opposite. <laughs> we, we, although we're promised that God would never leave us or forsake us. Um, however, this life will be filled with trials and uh, tribulations. Our relationship with Jesus is how we're going to be able to weather storms and keeping Christ as our foundation is paramount. As we move forward, brothers and sisters, I pray that the Lord will keep you and your family safe and that we all surrender to Jesus. We need him now more than ever. Thank you and happy Easter, everybody. Amen. Thank you, Jason. God bless you. 
uh, and God bless you for sharing what you did. I'd like to, to lead us in a time of prayer right now uh, to pray for, uh, let, let's pray for those that are on the front lines and let's pray for those that are sick and suffering. Pray with me, please. Let us pray. Father, we come before you boldly before your throne of grace knowing that you are the healer of the world. We come knowing that in a moment, in an instant, you can bring healing. And so, Lord, we, we pray this prayer of intercession now, knowing that you call us as people, people of faith, people of the resurrection, to intercede, Lord, for those who are suffering and are who are sick. And so, Lord, we lift them up to you now. And in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask, we plead, Lord, have mercy. Bring your healing touch. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, we pray for those families, Lord, who, who can't see their loved ones. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those, Lord, that are having to, to, to be alone. Lord, have mercy. God, we thank you for Jason. We thank you for all the doctors and nurses and EMTs and, and paramedics and police and firemen that are out there, Lord, that are risking their lives. We thank you for the grocery store workers that are risking their lives. And so, God, we pray your blessing of protection upon each one. God, we pray that you would endow them with supernatural immunity in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for their families. We pray for the families of those that are hurting and suffering now. God, and we pray your comfort, you as the God of all comfort, would come. Comfort them as they comfort one another. Lord, may you reveal your special presence to them. They're not alone. Lord, and we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the stories that we've heard of people recovering, of people getting better. God, we ask more, Lord. More, Lord. Let your healing go forth in the whole world, we pray. Not only physically, but spiritually and emotionally, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And we give you thanks now, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for praying. As we continue in our worship, I'd like to share this video clip with you. And I trust that it will bless you as we remember anew and afresh why we worship today. They saw the angel sitting there. Yes, Jesus Christ is alive. He rose from the dead in that day, that Easter Sunday morning, that first Easter, when Mary and Mary Magdalene and Siloam went to the grave expecting to anoint a dead body. They saw the angel sitting there. And they said, where is Jesus? The angel said, he is not here, he is risen. I submit to you tonight that that's the greatest news the world has ever heard. He is not here. He has conquered the grave. He's alive. And ladies and gentlemen, I believe that there's more proof that Jesus Christ rose from the dead than almost any other fact in Roman history.
I don't believe there's a fact in ancient history today so well proven as the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But even if there was no proof, no historical proof, no scientific proof, and there is, I would still believe it because I believe this book is God's inspired word and the whole early church went up and down the country preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That was the thing that shook the Roman Empire. That a man had risen from the dead. That he was alive. That death could not hold him. Christ is alive. He's a living Savior. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Well, if you if, uh, if you didn't recognize that voice, that was a young Billy Graham reminding us of the power and the passion of why we worship today. Yes, indeed, Jesus is alive. He is alive. He he's he's not just uh, someone uh, figure in history that we that we read about. He is alive today. He is seated at God's right hand. He is alive. Hallelujah. Just want to share a couple brief words with you as we continue in our worship today. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn to John 20. I'm only going to read a couple verses. John 20, verses 19 to 22. And it's toward the end of the Gospel of John. John 20, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 20, verses 19 through 22. And this is what it says here. It says, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters and friends, as we've, as we've been sort of going through this weird time together, uh, it's made me think about this, this pandemic. It, it's like the curse of sin. Hear me out for a moment, right? It's a virus that spreads and we can infect one another and get each other sick. Sin is like that. Sin is infectious. You hurt me, I'll hurt you. Eye for an eye, right? Revenge, hate, violence, unforgiveness, lust, lying, stealing. It's a spiritual disease that affects our lives, affects the world. And sin always spreads. We are all infected by it, by others who have infected us and by ourselves who have infected others. You see, just like this coronavirus, it's making us realize a few things. First of all, l let, me just, let me just imagine with me for a moment. What if we did this, right, the way we're treating this, this virus, what if, we do, what if we thought about that the same, in, in the same way we think about sin? Right? I'm, going, uh, I'm going to be careful not to sin against you because I don't want to infect you. Can you imagine what that would do? Right? We think about our own mortality now more these days. We are all connected, brothers and sisters. We are in this together. And you know what? We were made for connection. Right? If anything, right, this social distancing right, has made re me realize just how much we were made for, for connection with one another. We were made for community. I don't know about you, but man, I've been, I, I can feel it. It's been missing. I miss you guys. And I remember I was in, in another group with people and someone, you know, who said, they, uh, they said, and they didn't, I don't think they realized what they were saying. Man, I didn't realize I would miss you guys so much. <laughs> well, gee, thanks. <laughs> But yes, we were made for connection. That's why God said in the, in the beginning, in the garden, it's not good 
for man to be alone. That wasn't just about Adam and Eve. That's what it was about you and me and the whole world to us. It's not good to be alone, to be socially, relationally isolated. We were made for social closeness. This social distancing is not good at all. Why? Because we were made for one another. Brothers and sisters, a couple of days ago, Grace and Naomi and I, we watched a funeral live stream. And it was of a dear family that, that Naomi, uh, it's one of her classmates and her father, who's just a few years older than me, had died. And as we watched on this live stream, they're in that funeral home and it was just them and the close family. And you could see their hearts were aching and hurting. I felt so heartbroken because here they were, they were all alone, grieving, and there was no one there to grieve with them. My heart broke as they closed that casket and they're sobbing uncontrollably, rightly so, weeping, mourning. It felt so cold. Brothers and sisters, we were made to be in community with one another so that we could weep with those who weep. We could rejoice with those who rejoice. We, can, we, were, we were made to be together. Watching that, that, that funeral live stream, the, again, the most critical moment of needing a relational connection, and it was missing. Can you imagine when we all get back together what a celebration that will be. <laughs> I'm going to hug all of you. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. And I, I pray that you hold on to that hope. When we get, we're going to get back together someday soon. And we're going to worship together. And we're going to go all out. And we're going to praise Jesus. Can you imagine what it's going to be like at the marriage supper of the Lamb? When we are reunited with Christ. All of us, loved ones who've gone before <laughs> as well. Brothers and sisters, we were made for community, divine community. We have something to look forward to. But again, like I said, there's a virus, and it's called sin, and it kills too. It kills relationships. It kills connection. It separates us from one another and separates us from God, our Creator. Is there a cure for this? Infection, this disease of sin? Absolutely. Is there hope to be healed? Most definitely. You know, a pastor friend of mine had contracted the, cor uh, the coronavirus early on, and he had gotten really sick, and he recovered, thank the Lord. He was asked to come back to the hospital and allow them to draw his blood to see if there had been antibodies created within his, his own blood, uh, you know, making him immune, that could maybe help give a clue to coming up with a vaccine that could save others. Isn't that a remarkable? Isn't that amazing? The human body, amazing. Brothers and sisters, Jesus, our God in the flesh, willingly took on our infected humanity. And during his three years of active ministry, he showed us what it's like to live without that virus of sin. Not only did he physically heal people, set captives free who were imprisoned in their souls, but he also sacrificed himself by willingly exposing himself to the full weight of the disease of sin on the cross to save you and me, to save us all. He laid down his life to rescue us from death that comes through sin. The infection of sin stopped. Praise the Lord. Can I get an amen? The infection of sin stopped dead in its tracks on the cross that day. As Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And there it is. It stopped. Jesus is the cure. By forgiving he shows us that in his own life offered to save you and me, in his own blood is the immunity offered freely to you and to me and to everyone. 
This immunity, brothers and sisters, is so strong that it not only cancels the disease of sin, healing the sin-sick soul, but it can spread too. Jesus, rising from the dead, overpowers death, arrests death, puts death in his grave, and re-injects the world with new life. Jesus infects us with resurrection life. And you know what? It's been spreading for over 2,000 years. Just like Billy Graham reminded us, right? Something happened on that Sunday. And it's been happening ever since, one day at a time, one life at a time. As I close, I just want to quote this article that I read recently in Christianity Today. It comes from an Anglican priest named Tish Warren uh, in uh, Pittsburgh. And I love what she says. Listen to this, right? And just as we read, right, in, 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 in the Gospel of John, just like that first Easter, right? It didn't happen in a church building. It happened right outside of an empty tomb. And just, just like today, the disciples, they were all sequestered in, 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 in a room somewhere, with the door closed and locked because of fear and anxiety and uncertainty. And Jesus entered in and said, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. As God has sent me, now I'm sending you. You've got that immunity now. Peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. And that's what you and I need today is a fresh impartation of the Holy Spirit of Christ. Will you receive Christ today in that way? Listen to these words by Tish. I love it. Right? And yeah, just like Jason reminded us, right? it's so easy to ask questions. Why? 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 And, and I think it's okay to ask those questions, right? And even in Psalms, right? And even Jesus on the cross, he laments, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's okay because Jesus did it on the cross. It's okay for you. You can lament too. You can pray those prayers of lament too. But remember, they go to a God who hears and who, and who intervenes. You can trust this God who loves you. But listen to these words. I am a Christian today, not because it answers all my questions about the world or about our current suffering. It does not. And not because I think it is a nice, coherent, moral order by which to live my life. And not because I grew up this way or have fond feelings about felt boards and hymn sings. And not because it motivates justice or helps me to know how to vote. I am a Christian because I believe in the resurrection. I am a Christian because I believe Jesus rose from the dead. I believe in Jesus, brothers and sisters, like I believe in the sun. I know it's still shining, even when I don't see it, even when the storm clouds cover it up, even when I don't feel its warmth. I believe in Jesus because he met me at my cross. He met me in my own sin, sick state and brought healing to my soul and brought new life into my heart, brought me back to life and fills me with the fullest joy I have ever known. Will you let Jesus enter in today and speak that word of peace to you? He says he stands at the door and knocks. All you got to do is let him in. Pray with me, please. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word, which is both health and life to us. And we thank you, Jesus, that your life was offered for ours. You're the greatest superhero that laid down your life to save all of us. And so, God, I pray today, fresh and new, everyone in their homes right now, everyone that's watching right now, would get a sense of your touch and your presence new and afresh right now in Jesus' name. As Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit. I pray in every room and uh, every person 
would receive your Holy Spirit now, Lord Jesus, as they say, yes, Jesus, I want the immunity that you offer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is hope in you. Thank you, Lord, that you call us to go forth as well. And Lord, with that in mind, again, we pray. Lord, we pray for our leaders. We pray for those in our government, from the federal to the state to the local. God, we pray for all of them. Lord, we pray that you would bless them with supernatural wisdom and discernment. God, if there was ever a time that Republicans and Democrats need to realize we're in this together, God, I, we pray that that would happen. We pray that there would be a unity like never before. We pray that there would be healing in the land, not just physically, Lord, but socially and, and spiritually. God, we pray for revival in Jesus' name. And let it begin with us. Let it begin with your church. Lord, we pray for our military. We pray for those whom we love and we know that are serving now. And we pray your protection as well on them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we pray for our friends and our neighbors. We pray for our enemies. God, we pray that they would see you, Jesus as the only hope of salvation today, as we see you today. Lord, we give you thanks now. We allow you, Holy Spirit, have your way. Move in us, Lord, as we, as we respond to you in worship now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of fear what fears are still when striving cease? My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground, there in the ground, his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, 
Up from the grave he rose again. Yes, hallelujah. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine. But with the precious blood of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand till he returns. Or calls me home here in the power of Christ I stand. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. No power of hell, no scheme of man, no virus hmm. can ever pluck you. From God's hand. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to say another prayer. Pray with me right now, if you would. Lord, I pray especially for, for the moms and dads at home with little ones. Perhaps there's some moms and dads out there, Lord, that feel like they're at the end of their rope, feel like they're ready to, to pull their, <laughs> their hair out. God, we pray peace in the name of Jesus as well. We pray grace upon grace in the name of Jesus. God, likewise, we pray supernatural patience and strength and <laughs> perseverance, O oh Lord. And Lord, I pray, we pray for a fresh perspective today. And Lord, we do, we pray for our children. Lord, they're, they're the evidence, Lord, that you believe <laughs> in us. You believe in hope. You believe, Lord, your mercies are new every morning. And so, God, we pray a blessing on our children today. We pray a blessing, Lord, on every middle schooler and high schooler and college student. God, we pray your blessing on them. Lord, may they get on fire for you today. May they, may they know the love of God in Christ. God, we pray for our teachers out there as well, oh, Lord. And we pray likewise, God, that you would give them abundant patience and wisdom, Lord, as they have to navigate this new world, Lord, of learning and teaching. Thank you, Lord. 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 Friends, before we go, I'd just like to share a couple of verses with you 
First off is Isaiah 53, a beautiful passage of Scripture in the Old Testament written hundreds of years before Christ, prophesying about Jesus and what he did for you and for me on the cross. Jesus, he was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Hallelujah. As we go, I want to leave a different benediction with you today than I normally do. Normally, I like to read the one out of Jude. But today, I want to leave the one that comes out of 1 Peter chapter 1. And if you're at home right now, if you would maybe put your hands out, palms up as, as, as an offering of, of receiving from the Lord now. Brothers and sisters and friends, praise be to the God, our Father. And the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his great mercy, he has given you new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. May God bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious. And give you peace. Happy Easter. God bless you.